Everyone's building practical cars these days. Lamborghini and Aston Martin, they both make SUVs. Tesla has a warthog for a pickup truck. So I don't think it's out of the question for Ferrari to make a station wagon. Or is it? This is the Ferrari FF. Not the Ferrari you're thinking about when I say the word Ferrari. It's got an all wheel drive system, four seats, and it's still practical in its own Italian ways. But there's something about this car that still makes a quintessential Ferrari. Happens to be my favorite part. Let me show you. Here it is. The high revving 6.3 liter V12, producing 651 horsepower, 504 foot pounds of torque. Ferrari did a good job making this thing. Look at it. It's gorgeous. But let's stop there. So, this car is equipped with Soul Performance test pipes and X pipe. Doesn't do much for the power, but it does a lot for this car's engine note. It sounds glorious, which you guys will hear later. Let's move on to these brakes and these rims. This car does have Ferrari standard carbon ceramic brakes all around. They work. I know they work, because last night on my drive home, I almost hit a deer. So thank you, Ferrari and your carbon ceramic brakes. You saved this car and my wallet. Obviously, these are not the Ferrari standard wheels. These are HRE P201 wheels. But enough about the brakes and the wheels. Let's talk about the boot space. And here's the trunk. It's actually pretty big. You can fit a lot of stuff in there, but you can make it bigger. All you gotta do, pull that latch, pull these seats down. And now you have a larger area. But enough about the trunk space. Let's drive this thing. So the exhaust note, it's a Ferrari V12. Kind of self-explanatory. It just sounds glorious. Have a listen. So this car drives, in my opinion, great. It drives smaller than it looks, if that makes sense. I get it, it's a big station wagon, V12 up front but it's very agile and very direct. Ferrari's done a really good job on the driving dynamics of this car. Transmission, super smooth. It's a seven speed dual clutch. It's odd, I was trying to find some settings for it in terms of the velocity or the ferociousness of the shifting, but I'm actually fine with the way it is. There's nothing wrong with it. Right now, I have it in auto and in comfort. And the car, it honestly doesn't feel like I'm in a Ferrari or some $250,000 sports car. It feels like I'm in a normal car, which I actually like, and I get it. The purpose of this car, this makes sense. Some of the quirks of this car, for example, this morning when I started it, it was obviously cold outside, and the car was showing me an electrical malfunction. Now, everything was working fine, and then realized the steering wheel was just blinking at me. And what I mean by that is the shift lights are up here and it kept blinking and you can hear it and see it in all the switches here. So for the first 35 minutes this morning, I was not able to use the signal lights, the drive select or the high beam button or anything except the start button. But after about 35 minutes, it went away and now everything's driving fine. There's no check engine light. There's no electrical system failure. And I'm gonna assume the reason it's like that is, I mean, I only have one explanation for it. It's a Ferrari. This interior is covered in leather. I'm talking from front to back. Everything is leather, including these visors. Everything has red stitching on it. There's carbon fiber everywhere. The door handle, for example, this thing is some sort of 
exotic metal, and I like it. And there's carbon fiber in it. Yeah. It's spacious, actually. The people in the back, you get room. If you sit like this, at least. But you can't gangster lean in this car. Since this is the first time we had a Ferrari on our channel, I'm curious to see where it stacks up on the fast list. So in order to do that, I'll hand it over to our resident race car driver. All right. Since this is our friend Ruchi's Ferrari, we'll take it easy and just do a light launch. This probably isn't the best representation for Ferraris for their first time here, but I have the real life numbers right here. And keep in mind, we didn't use launch control for any of this. So the real life zero to 60 that we got was 3.88 seconds. The zero to 100 time was 7.75 seconds. And the quarter mile time was 11.59 seconds at 124.38 miles per hour. Oddly enough, it's as quick as an Audi R8 V10. It's not immensely impressive, but it's no slouch either. Anyways, here are the numbers that we really care about. The rolling 40 to 100 and the 60 to 130. The Ferrari FF did it in 5.02 and 8.8 .8 seconds, respectively. That's completely identical to an R8 V10, but that's a sleek sports car. And this is a station wagon, so hats off to you, Ferrari. If you're an American muscle fan like I am, just go to Dodge and buy a Hellcat, because that'll cream both these cars to 130. But if you're racing past 130, then here are the standing half mile times for the Ferrari. 18.16 seconds at 149.95 miles per hour. Not too shabby, but I'm pretty sure the Hellcat's still gonna beat you. But we understand that not everybody's gonna be racing their Ferraris, and at $150,000 used, it's not cheap by any means. But a Ferrari will change your life. What concerns me about this car is the maintenance. Now Ferrari does give seven years unlimited mileage maintenance package, but once that's done, then what? After driving this car for a few days, I've actually fallen more in love with it. On paper, it's a great car, but in practice, it's also a great car. I mean, it's not everybody's cup of gelato here. I get it, the design's a little controversial, but I like it. And honestly, I would love to buy one of these things, maybe when they depreciate a little bit more. But what do you guys think? Would you get one of these practical Ferraris? Let me know in the comments below. First time on the channel? Don't forget to check out some of my other stuff. I produce all sorts of cool content with performance cars and acceleration tests, so if that's your jam, be sure to hit that subscribe button and ring that bell icon for new episodes every Thursday. Thanks for watching.